Well, it's a new year gift from Foreign Investment Promotion Board. The nodal body gave the go-ahead to Vodafone to buy out minority stakeholders' uh, shares like Ajay Peramal as well as Analjeet Singh in its Indian arm at an estimated cost of $1.6 billion. Now, since the investment is more than 1,200 crore rupees, the company's proposal will also require clearance from the Cabinet Committee of Economic Affairs. The other big approval that came in from the nodal body was, of course, for Tesco's plan to invest $110 million in the multi-brand retail sector, making the UK-based retailer the first foreign player to open stores in India that will sell everything from fruits to furniture. Tesco will buy 50% stake in Tata Group's Trent hypermarkets. Joining me now to discuss this further is Abhik Singhi. He's partner at Boston Consulting Group, and he's joining us here in the studio. Abhi, good morning, and good thanks morning. for taking the time out. I'm going to begin by asking. You. This is the first foreign retailer is coming into the country after FDI and multi-brand retail opened up. Are there still some uh, points where we are seeking clarity or is everything now clear as far as the FDI rules go? No, so I think uh, what Tesco's proposal actually sets in place is clarity around what is required. Yeah. Uh, so I think the investment in the back end uh, and not into existing infrastructure, I think that point has been clarified. I think the two things which are important and which need to be clarified yeah. as, and we'll see as it unfolds is around the sourcing. Yeah. So you know, some of the reports have been talking about local sourcing, but it has not clarified whether it is sourcing from SMEs or not. So I think that's going to be something which is going to be tracked. And the second is what happens in states which have not yet given approval or entry into cities which are below 1 million population. Sure. So those are the two things which are to watch out for. But otherwise, uh, it, it's a small step forward. How about the fact that uh, while uh, the, there was clarification on the back end and the inf investment there, uh, are we clear now whether when it comes to acquiring stores or setting up new stores, what is the investment requirement there for a foreign retailer? Uh, so DIPP has been very clear mm -hmm. uh, that the $100 million investment that people are talking about or the $50 million in back end mm -hmm is around greenfield infrastructure, sure. greenfield investment. So there sure. is clarity and consistency so far that it is not about buying existing assets regardless of what the price of that is. Sure. It is around fresh investment and that's what Tesco has committed to. Okay, all right. Uh, does that uh, leave any scope for uh, confusion for the other retailers? I mean, what's stopping a Walmart mm. now from mm. going ahead and figuring out its plans? What's stopping Carrefour? They have been in conversation for, what, three years now? Yeah. Uh, what is the difference here? So, uh, you know, I, I think there are two, two broad reasons why we are not seeing action. Uh, one which is specific to the Indian context, the other which is not. Sure. So I think what... Walmart, Carrefour's and the others are waiting for was who takes the first step and how does that pan out. So I think they are going to see how the Tesco experiment pans out for the next three months, six months. Yeah. And then we are going to see not only from these two, but from others, yeah. major steps into the Indian market. That's yeah. number one. The second, and which is, uh, you know, regardless of what happens in India, is uh, many foreign retailers have not been too successful outside their domestic markets. Yeah. And I think right now, whether it's Walmart or Carrefour, they are in the process of consolidating mm. what their international operations are. Sure. And I think that's what is holding them back to commit in a big way mm. to India. Mm. If you look at experiences of many players in China, you know, we are seeing the same thing happening. Uh, so one of the things which is interesting is we may actually see movements from the East, East. Yeah. Uh, which is you know, Japan or Korea, yeah rather than movements from the West. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's something which uh, which would be an interesting thing to see how it pans out. So that's one trend to watch out for, more Japanese and Korean retailers coming into the Absolutely. country. But mm -hmm. what about the fact that, uh, th is there enough out there in terms of local players and their mm -hmm. business setup that's attractive enough for foreign retailers right now? Walmart stepped away from yes. Bharti. We, 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 uh, Future Group's gone through its an entire process of consolidation. Is there enough out there? We knew that Trent was one of the companies which was always expanding very cautiously. They had their plans in place. So it was a safe bet. Mm -hmm. What about the others? Um, so I think if you look at the domestic retailers, after the initial period of rapid expansion, if you look at over the last two years, mm -hmm. All the major Indian players yeah. have been in a process of consolidation and restructuring. Yeah. Uh, that does two things. Number one, the period of rapid, rampant expansion is behind many Absolutely. of those. Uh, the second thing is actually for the first time over the last 10 years, 
we actually see evidence of food and grocery retailers mm. making money in pockets. Okay. Uh, and that's a very, uh, you know, very uh, uh, interesting signal mm. because it shows that people can actually make money if the business is run right. Absolutely, because till now the, these segments were only used to get the footfalls and absolutely. then you would turn to other higher margin segments. A absolutely. So I, I think it's very interesting you find people who are at high sales per square feet, uh, who are actually making attractive margins, who are making store level and sometimes even format level profits. So mm. that's something which we've never seen in the last five, ten years. Mm. And we are seeing that for the first time in food and grocery retail, which I think makes it more attractive for players to consider the Indian market. Any fresh math that you have for us in terms of how much investment can come into the retail segment in the next, say, five years? Uh, you know, that, that, that's a tough one. Uh, my sense is if the Tesco experiment mm. uh, will actually bear good results, sure. uh, we could see over the next three to five years anywhere between one and a half to three billion dollars coming in fresh investment. So okay. this, I'm not talking about buyouts. Sure. Uh, right. So this is fresh investment.